Hiya homebrewers! I am Javier Ini and I'm back to the brewing days. As I mentioned in a previous episode, the beer style I'll be brewing today is the closest that an ale can get to a lager. And that is, in my humble opinion, a golden ale. According to the camera, the campaign for real ale, the golden ale is a quenching and well hopped style of beer created and developed in the 80s as an attempt from independent brewers to win young lager drinkers <laughs> uh, from heavily promoted lager brands. And that last part is actually the reason why, or one of the reasons why I wanted to brew a golden ale. Notice that it's not my intention to induce the youth to drinking. It's just that when I brew, I brew based on my taste and my taste is more pointing towards the IPAs and well hopped beers. Uh, but it's inevitable that sometimes my friends or family, they want to try my beers and when I have offered them my treasures, some of them have considered that IPAs are just too much for them. So I want to brew something that is close enough to a ladder, which is what they drank normally, to drag them into the ale territory. Now, when I say laggers, I'm referring to decent laggers with a decent grain bill, not to rice, corn, and wheat, overcarbonated and mass-produced crap. That I won't brew because that would be a waste of time, money, and ingredients, and most important, I don't like them anyway, so I won't brew that. So with that being said, and in honor to my lager drinking friends, and that includes my wife and my dad, let's brew a golden ale! Let's get brewing! And here we are in the kitchen. As you can see there, I've got everything already prepared to start brewing. But before, we need a home brew. And here we have it. This is a very special one. This is a beer mail I received from Beer Goggler. And this is his clone of Brewdog Spunk IPA. So let's crack it open. That's a very nice sound. A little smoke coming out of the bottle. And let's give it a pour. I'm sorry I don't have my pint glass with me. It's still packed, but I'll get it back soon. And here we have it. Here we have it. Look at that. It's a very nice beer. It's a little darker than mine, but I can already smell the hops in here. I know this is a good one just by the smell of it. Cheers, beer goggler, and thank you for the beer mill. Hmm. This is very, uh, very close to the uh, to the original beer. If it wasn't for the color, because it's it's more of an amber ale rather than than Brudox, um, very blown uh, beer, only by the taste, which is at the end of the day the most important part of a beer, at least in my opinion, this is very close and, hmm, it's actually very good that, that this such a thing happened because it allows me to, to conclude that you don't need to buy the Brewdog kit. Beer Goggler just constructed the uh, the recipe by himself uh, using the uh, presumably using the uh, DIY brew dog uh, guide that was released some months ago and where it's published well the, the whole recipe and the whole amount of ingredients you need so you don't need to get brew dogs trademark hops and and grains to get something like this uh, this is in my opinion really close to to brew dogs Punk IPA and congratulations Beer Goggler. By the way, Beer Goggler has just released his YouTube channel. If you want to check it out, go on the comment section below. There is a link to his channel. Uh, for the time being, he's reviewing beers, but I hope he's brewing and he's teaching us some, some of his magic. Um, I, he's, he's taught me a lot of techniques uh, related, mostly related to hops. But I'm sure he's got a lot to show, so please check out his channel. Let's take a look at the ingredients we'll be using. 
All right, so first off, eight liters of water in this container, which we'll be using as a fermenter. And you may say, why eight? Well, because I got this size and I said, why not? It's, it's more beer. So my recipes, which are uh, mostly based on a five liter uh, mash, are now escalated to eight liters. And if you want to get the five liter version, just scale it down. 900 grams of Vienna malt, 250 grams of Munich, 250 grams of Pilsner. Now the hops. Five grams of Simcoe, five grams of Athenum, and finally five grams of Chinook. Our yeast. We'll be using half of this M36 uh, Mangrove Jacks Liberty Bale, which is a very, very good yeast. For this brew, I won't be using any fining agents because even if I got some Protofloc tablets, I want to try uh, mashing at a higher temperature to see if that helps with a clearer beer at the end of the day. So I'm pouring the whole contents of this 8 liter bottle and we're gonna get this to 70 degrees which is slightly higher than the temperature in which I normally mash but let's give it a try and see what happens. So I'll be back once we have the temperature that we need. Cheers! All right, now our water is 70 degrees. That's the temperature that we needed. So it's time to start the mesh. And as you can see here in the back, I've already measured the hop additions. So let's get to it. One thing that I've noticed in order to improve my efficiency and by the way, it's not to blow my own trumpet, but I, I get very high efficiency. And I believe it's due to the fact that I stir a lot the, uh, the brewing bag. I try to avoid the creation of dull balls. Uh, so I wanted to share this little tip or trick with you in case you just drop and sink the uh, the brewing bag, it's worth giving it a, a wee bit of a stir, of a shake, whatever you want to call it, because this ensures that your the uh, that the grains will be fully soaked, and this way, well, you'll get the most goodness of the grains, the most uh, the highest conversion. Look at the color of that. Look at the color. It's already a very hazy wort. Look at that. The smell is glorious. It's this very sweet smell to chamomile that I always get at this point of the mash. And by the way, I've never brewed using Vienna. I know that Pilsner tends to create this type of, this, this sort of foam that we're seeing here. But Vienna, never brewed with that malt before. First time. Let's see how it goes. And Munich, of course, it's, it's creating this beautiful color and beautiful aroma that I'm sensing here. Truly wish you could perceive it, but if you brew it at home, you will be able to. So this will be a 60 minute mash, a standard, uh, standard mash, but at 70 degrees. And I'll be back once it's done. Cheers. All right, so the mash is over, and that means that it's time for the sparge. Look at that color. It's actually darker than I was expecting, but that doesn't worry me too much. I think in any case I'm gonna get uh, a golden color out of this. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now it's a little bit orangey. Now for the sparge, since I don't have my kettle at hand, I'll have to do it patiently, like this. This is more or less, I would say, almost two liters of boiling water. It's basically the same thing, but without the kettle. I'm just gonna pour this very gently, and this actually allows me to get uh, more control in the amounts of water I'm pouring. 
and at the same time I'm gonna turn this to maximum power to get it to a boil for the hot petitions. So I'll be just, you know, sparging this as usual and I'll be back once we have the rolling boil that we need for the hop additions. All right, first hop addition. This is five grams of Simcoe, and in they go. And I'll be back 15 minutes before the end of the boil for the flavor hop addition. So this is gonna be a really simple brewing in terms of the hop additions. But I'm hoping that the uh, the hop varieties that I've chosen will give this beer a very nice flavor. I'll be back. Cheers! 15 minutes before the end of the boil, time to add 5 grams of the phantom, and in they go. And here we are at the last 5 minutes of the boil, time to add our aroma hops, 5 grams of Chinook. And now it's only a matter of minutes until the end of this brew. I'll be back once it's done. And there we have our beer along with the uh, sample I took for the gravity rating. Here's a pic for you to see it better. And it's 10.59. So it's a little higher than I expected, but one never knows what the FG is going to be. I'm aiming for a solid 5.0% ABV. I think I'm going to get something higher than that. 5.5 would be acceptable. So it's time to pitch the yeast. Got half a packet here. And in it goes. So this is almost the end of another successful brew night. I'll give you some news and updates tomorrow. Cheers! And here we are next day. I'm sorry if you hear some noise from the washing machine. It's inevitable. And you might be wondering, where's the fermentation vessel with our brew? Well, that's uh, the, I guess, the only comment I have to make today. Um, contrary to what I did in the UK, which was to place it near the radiator to keep the, uh, the temperature stable, here well, radiators are useless, for the time being at least, and uh, so I just had to look for the coldest place in this house, which is a uh, closet, and uh, there it is. There it is, in the dark. I measure the temperature and it's around 20. Sometimes during the day it gets a little higher, 20, 22 probably, and during the night it lowers to something close to 18. So, um... <laughs> I'm not happy with those fluctuations of temperature. I rather keeping a very stable temperature, but that's the best I could find, at least for the time being. Um, I'll let you know how things go in the taste test. Um, so that's pretty much it. In the next brewing episode, we'll be brewing that winter warmer, I promised. I must confess that I was tempted to substitute it, to change it, uh, by a coffee stout, a vanilla espresso stout uh, that, to be honest, appeals more uh, to me now uh, considering that the, uh, th there will be no winter to warm <laughs> here but my word is my word and uh, I'll brew the winter warmer and I'll also brew the uh, espresso, vanilla espresso stout so that's it for this week I hope you had some fun as much as I did if you like what you see, like and don't forget to subscribe and as usual, thanks for watching, cheers and beers!